now there's too much information coming in and it's too difficult for you to do that. And then sequenced. Everything has components to it. Rolling over in bed, moving sit to stand, getting in and out of a car, has a sequence of movements that you automatically did before. Now you have to think them through. And then complete one part of it before you do the next part. So we're going to look at those a little bit. Okay? Cues. You can teach yourself the cues that you need that are going to help you to stay functional. Care partners, you can reinforce those cues by knowing which cues work the best. So instead of saying, okay, come on now, John, move forward on the chair and let's uh, do this and do that, and, you know, uh, giving a whole lot of different cues, use one or two words. You know, walk the hips forward. Good. Lean forward. Good. Now stand. And it, that way it's going to be much more helpful for the person. And cues can be attention, so thinking about the movement, or the care partner bringing your attention to it. It can be auditory. They have iPods, you know, everybody's running around with iPods in, right? Well, they have some with a metronome, uh, and that you can have a certain measured beat, so that when you're walking, you're walking to that beat, and that's going to help you to keep that good distance when you're walking and speed of walk. And visual. And one of the things that is really good is putting strips of tape on the floor if you're freezing, for example, going in and out of a narrow doorway, uh, in a bathroom, turning around, getting on and off an elevator, going down a narrow hallway. Strips of just masking tape on the floor. You'll just walk over them like that. Like that. It works like magic kind of stuff. If we have time, which we don't have much time to use today to do that. And then Care partners, this is to help you to help the other person without actually physically lifting the person. So give them cues. We don't want learned helplessness. We want them to be able to be as functionally mobile as, for as long as possible. So using the cues can help them to go to a different spot in their brain and actually helps them to be functional for a long period of time. Okay, let's just look a little bit at bed mobility. How many of you try to roll over like this with your legs out straight? That makes it impossible because you can't get any momentum. <coughs> so if you shorten that work arm by bringing knees up, that's going to help right there. So the first cue is knees up. And then what I have people do is I have them actually turn their head and reach their arm out on the side that they're going to move to. Now this man on this um, shot does not put his arm out to the side. Okay, I would have him put this underarm out straight because it's kind of like a visual cue of where you want to go. It's like pointing to where you want to go. Let the knees flap over. You got gravity on your side, right? And if you get close to the edge of the, the bed, then you can put those knees so that they actually fall over the edge. And now the weight of the legs is going to help to raise you up. Like that. And there's lots of good exercises you can do for strengthening those arms. I remember I said the extensor muscles are weak. And I've noticed this mostly in uh, women with Parkinson's, that they have a lot of difficulty because their arms are very weak. Practicing on the side of the bed several times a day. Just push up and bring your chin back down, like that, that kind of an activity. You wouldn't do it standing like I'm doing, you'd do it laying on the edge of the bed. But that would be great for strengthening those extensor muscles, okay? Now, when we go sit to stand, it's important for us to shift that center of gravity over the base of support, right? Because if you don't, this is what happens. How many of you, has anybody had that problem where you've fallen backwards? When you were trying to stand up, you kind of do a tumble backwards. It's called retropulsion. Okay, we're going to practice going sit to stand. Can I introduce yes. something here? Uh -huh. For the last five or six years, I've been following a procedure that I get out of a Parkinson book. But I have a four post poster bed, uh -huh. and I tie a rope on one of the four posts, 
It is the absolute simplest way in the world compared to the procedure of using only the bodies and gravity. Because you're, you're pulling yourself up actually so with your arms. Using upper body yes, yes. strength mm -hmm. and my arms mm -hmm. and my chest. Mm -hmm. and lift and I hardly even worry about weight, the weight of my life. Uh -huh. so and that, that, it's terrific. Yep. And that will work better for a man than it will for a woman. Again, because she doesn't have the strength to pull herself up usually. But um, that's a good uh, procedure yeah, too. And that was in the, um, <coughs> the um, American Parkinson's Disease Foundation booklet. I saw that in there also. It's using a bed pull. Okay, we're going to work on sit to stand. What's the first thing I have to do to get out of this chair? Scoot forward, right? Or walk the hips forward. Can you feel those little sit bones? Those are called your ischial tuberosities. So keep that in mind. You can oh, drop it at a <laughs> you can drop that at a party somewhere, right? So you want to get nice and far forward on the chair. You want your feet apart. Okay. Feet apart when you're gonna do this. Because you, when you stand up, you want a wide base of support. You don't want to have your feet close together because then you're going to be real tippy. Okay? And now to get yourself forward, there are several ways you can do that. One is to just take your hands, link them together, and push them forward and go up. And then all your hands were hooked to your bottom. <laughs> huh? Isn't that easy? And then sitting down, go down slow like you're going to sit on a crate of eggs. If you have difficulty with that, John argues says, pretend you're picking up a $20 bill off the floor. And reach down and pick up that 20. And care partners, I mean, I would. And see, you don't have to worry about where you're going to land in the chair because if you drop your head, your butt sticks out. Who knew, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be aligned with the chair. But you want to practice that, and you should really be practicing standing up and sitting down from every seating surface in your house every day. So you've got some nice chairs that you like to sit in. You've got some other ones that are a little difficult. You've got that soft couch that you don't like to get out of. Practice. So that's one of the best things that you can do for yourself. Another thing that I see that happens with people with Parkinson's is if you're going to sit in a chair, especially if there's a table there, kind of go this way, right? You ease into the chair, and then you got a hangover on this side, right? You got part of the dupa hanging off the edge, right? This is actually three things. I'm going to walk to the chair, that's part one. Ta-da! And if I don't think about the chairs, but I'm looking instead at that light fixture up there, then I'm going to do it better. If I'm thinking about the chair, I'm always going to reach out and grab it. That's part of Parkinson's. So I get here, and that's done. So I've completed that part of the task. Now I'm going to turn, and now that's done. Now I'm going to sit. I'm going to look down, and I sit. And I complete that part. So you break it down into the components of the sequence, and that makes you always safe when you're doing it. Now, we don't have hardly any time, so one of the things I want to talk about is when you're walking, anybody that has trouble with walking, especially if you're freezing or anything like that, or you just feel like you're not picking up your feet or taking as long a step as you'd like to, one of the best techniques that I've found is if you estimate the number of steps that it's going to take for you to get from point A to point B. Because then you're not thinking about walking anymore. You're using one of those other tracks in the brain that we talked about and it's going to help you to do the job without faltering. And you know that, right, Alan? We practice that on the cruise, is having people walk around and actually estimating the number of steps that they're taking. So try that when you leave uh, the building today. Think about how many steps you have to take to get from one exit to the other. And just kind of focus your eyes on like an exit sign or a picture on the wall or something like that because if you're looking down like this you're always going to have short steps because now you can't get full range of motion at the hips 
You have to have the head up. Again, it's this with your head hooked to your body. So focus on the light fixture up there and then walk in that posture. Would you like to demonstrate, Alan? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Would you really? No. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Look at that. You got there a lot faster, didn't you? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I, that's all we have.